Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Harmony. I'm a twin flame expert helping twin flames around the globe face fears, find freedom, and glow forward on fire. Welcome to my weekly glow show, and today's topic is twin flames are champions, and love has won, and are you in it to win it? So I wanna teach you three different steps today to help you get to the finish line in your twin flame journey. And um, before I do, I want to kind of share a little bit about the energy of what I'm seeing where the divine masculine is, the energy of where I'm seeing the divine feminine, and how that's affecting the, the reunion status. And we're, you know, like a, a kind of a little update of what it is means and what it, uh, where we're looking at these finish lines. And, you know, the divine masculines are on their way. Everybody's feeling it. You know, we're ready to uh, see this come into play as the divine feminine. The divine masculines are ready to start facing themselves in the mirror. And today's topic as well is on any given day, they're going to be facing that man in the mirror. They're going to be showing up. And the question becomes, are you ready to receive the gold? Are you ready for your victory and claiming gold? And gold as a finish, you know, as a victory, you know, I'm looking as my acronym for gold is going the extra mile, one heart, uh, love, uh, let love live. And then the D is for divine destiny. So G is go to the extra mile. The O is one heart and the L is let love live. And the D is divine destiny. So I always like to make acronyms so that when I say, are you ready to bring home the gold? These are kind of the pieces in the gold that I'm referring to. And again, before I start, I want to say something else. So I have a very special treat for you that you will want to watch to the finish line here. So I promise you by watching to the finish line of today's show, you it will be worth the wait and you will like be able to create your own little trophy today because i have a special surprise for you to at the finish line today um so be sure to stay tuned okay um now let's talk about first where the divine masculine's energy is because you know um well i would say like i get a lot of feedback because my clients are you know watching other readers and other energy healers, other twin flame experts. And so I get a lot of feedback. Normally I've in the past done that too. I honestly have not had a chance to really get out there and research anything because I'm, you know, always open. I'm always channeling in and it's as much as I can do to just bring in to get out, bring in to get out and show up. So the cool thing is, is I'm getting feedback every day from my own clients, my own um, fan base that's coming back to say, other people are, are saying the same thing. And what little bit of social media I've seen is also say I'm seeing the same thing. The divine masculine is on their way home. And even myself included in my own journey, um, am really seeing the resistance release. I'm feeling the resistance release because my um, champ, my champion, my beloved uh, champ of my dog, um, a lot of things have shifted in that energy. A lot of the, and he's representing this whole dynamic for me to track as well as a lot of other things are too, my own journey, um, my clients for feedback. But, um, you know, Champ is playing a huge role in this for me to track where the divine masculine energy energies are right now. And I'm feeling a shift in energy on a lot of levels. So I can personally feel the release and the resistance. Um, even with down to champ is the point of me, me sharing that with you. Um, and also having come into more inner peace within myself and the trust aspect of the journey and knowing champs coming home. Um, and, um, not just, you know, putting that out there and having to work through those doubts and, and all of those things. But as far as the divine masculine goes, they're waking up. They've let go of the resistance and the battle and the fight against themselves really their running aspect they're tired they're worn out they're um exhausted they are um you know actually even having some regrets within themselves and of course they like the divine feminine are also in different phases and different stages of this so i'm going to share with you the phases and stages i've experienced and what i'm being shown and again each i think it's going to be a pattern for all the divine masculine to kind of go through 
like sort of like a series and a sequence of these things and different ones will be at different places based on their own individual journey. But a lot of what I'm seeing now is a lot of regrets, uh, a lot of guilt and carrying those things. But the, co the coolest thing is they're fading, ready to face that, that person in the mirror and to take some accountability. And that's where we're feeling this resistance release that they're just not fighting the process anymore. And they have moved beyond the illusion and they're still not to say they're out of the dark night of the soul and that they're out of hell basically, but they're awakening to the concept and the idea that um, they want that inner peace. They want that happiness and they're seeking outside of themselves to get it. That does not mean they've said yes to the twin flame journey yet. And that's where the divine feminine is going to have to stay patient um, to the nth degree longer and really be tested. But um, we have to understand that they also have to continue to wake up. They have to continue to let go. They have to actually then move beyond that and heal themselves. They have to now learn how to trust this process like we're still trying to do, right? How can we expect them to like trust this if we're still learning that? And then they also have to start taking some action and putting these concepts and ideas that they're going to be waking up to into motion. So I have mentioned and said this in the past that the energy is shifting for everyone to be working on themselves um, up through, you know, September here. And then I'm also being shown that a lot of reunion um, and contact between beloveds are going to be between September 22nd and December 22nd. And, but what I want to say when I say that, that does not mean that there won't be twin flames showing up and ready to harmonize some things in the 3D because that will happen. But I think what we're going to see most of them showing up in the 3D is coming within to make an appearance um, in order to uh, start to reconnect some things. But it does not mean that they're ready yet. They have, I mean, you know, this is still a journey for them. Again, they have to heal. They have to put this stuff in motion. And I'm being shown that just like we do, there's still more activation to be had within them. They still have to work it and live it. And before they can bring it into form. And one of the things I'm seeing with my clients and, and the connection of all this, the, the divine masculine is coming into a lot of formation now and showing up in the 3D in a lot of ways. Okay. Even down to, um, you know, paralleling paths on journeys and, and trips. And, you know, I've seen this even with client that, you know, is trailed off on a trip to be followed by the divine masculine and, but it's not timing. The timing's not right. So what we have to realize is we're still anchoring the energies and we're still pulling them in that it's it's not exactly the timing for a lot of reasons. And your own mission can be part of the reason of the timing of it and your own lessons within this. But it's getting so close and we can feel it. And so this is really testing. So I'm going to shift into the divine feminine energy now. This is really testing the divine feminine. And it, it's forcing the divine feminine to really heal those last final deepest layers of the abandonment and it's creating a lot of anger it's creating a lot of um being sick and tired and stepping up and for once finally surrendering okay so because the divine masculine has let go of resistance also most and that's not all but you know most of the divine feminine is letting go of resistance and um, if they're still experiencing resistance, what I'm seeing is, is there's a lot of clearing for the divine masculine going on right now, especially this week. My personal self has experienced some experiences that I, I felt emotions coming through me that living out that, you know, at the end of the day going wow, this is not even mine to own. I've already done all this. I'm, I can see beyond it. I know that this is not even me. And the, I'm seeing this like this week, I've had at least six to eight clients process the same thing. I think I started earlier in the week and everybody was following me behind it, confirming that. And I'll share a couple more details about that in a minute. But for the moment, like with the divine feminine, um, they are feeling that the battle is over. They are also feeling that the divine masculine is reaching out for help and not just reaching out for help, but like screaming for help. 
and also uh, feeling that the trail of these signs are just getting clearer and louder and stronger and even to the feeling that they can tell it's coming from the divine masculine and their higher selves coming in to ask for help and assistance and um the, so those signs are just getting like so loud and so clear and you know i see this as well as i'm getting feedback from a lot of clients that are getting the same feedback so um, this is not just a fantasy here. This is not just us making this up. I mean, these are real signs. These are real um, things that, you know, there's no way in our conscious mind could we ever concoct such a connection as what's happening right now. And, um, you know, the love that don't bind feminine are also have this feeling, though, of, you know, the surrender that they're having is that, you know, the divine masculine is just going to be walking in the door like any minute. Um, and so, you know, but the same token, what I would caution the divine feminine is, is I know it's okay to get excited. We still have to praise them. We still have to be open arms with them, but we still have to continue our journey. We can't get stuck here in this little piece of like, uh, there's a fine line at looking at this as our old patterns versus our new patterns, because the difference in this is the intention behind it. So in the past, we've had to learn how to, uh, let go and like like withhold to a certain degree um but the withholding in the past there was an intention behind it if you don't give to me i'm then going to withhold from you because you're withholding from me and that's not the right way to handle it but it's the way to handle it that the divine feminine has had to do to work through the divine feminine's own way of releasing those codependencies and attachments but now what is happening is the divine masculine is kind of reaching out from the higher self and the divine feminine. So I'm seeing this in multiple clients that I work with here that they're also um, have woken up and they've surrendered and they're letting go. And now they can feel that their intention behind it is not that they're not going to reach out the divine masculine and fix the divine masculine. They are staying open to it, but they can see that the divine masculine now has to step up and step into this on their own and continue to work on themselves on their own and they're watching this happen and they're feeling this happen and they're not stepping in because they're no longer codependent i'll give you another example um sometimes i see where the divine feminine will come in like they'll push away the 5d when the when the 5d and the energy comes in and the divine masculine is showing up well, when that happens, they I've seen where sometimes they'll get frustrated with the 5D because they're like, I'm sick of you being here in the 5D. I want the 3D. But then, you know, they might still have interaction with the divine masculine in the 3D. But then in the 3D, they're still in codependency mode and they're still seeking out and they're still like craving and pulling in the 3D mode. But then when the 5D comes in, the 5D, they're saying, you know, they, they're not able to say that in the 3D. So they're saying to the 5D, well, I'm tired of you showing up and you know when you decide to show up in 3d we'll talk okay and it's actually the reverse what needs to be happening you need to be setting your boundaries in the 3d and giving letting them go and surrendering and letting them feel that separation of your energy not that you've abandoned them but that you are not fixing them but let them come into you at the higher self into the 5d and creating that connection which I'm seeing a lot of clients are doing right now, creating these huge connections in the 5D, and they can tell this is real. They can tell that, you know, I'm, I'm also seeing a lot of clients that are having like telepathy with their um, their divine uh, partner in, like it's technically in the 5D, but that it's turning around and coming out into 3D formation and creating a reality that's really happening in the telepathy that the divine masculine is actually feeling it in the 3d too now is it 100 percent communicated back through every one of them no but there's signs that are showing it based on different things that are happening but i have seen signs that's coming back through the 3d as well that the, the divine masculine is reporting back now i want to share with you a few of my own experiences since the um eclipse of my own personal experiences with the divine the return of the divine um, masculine so not only am i getting my own personal 3d signs um, from my own journey 
um, my own journey with my beloved champ, and then also in 3D with, you know, feedback from clients, um, but then also other scenarios that are, that are presenting themselves for me to work with the divine masculine in 3D by people showing up to me that are the divine masculine. So, you know, I've recently had um, new clients that are the divine masculine, okay? This is new. This has been since the eclipse. And I will tell you, they're coming in very, very confused, very exhausted. Um, they're coming in saying, you know, I don't really know who my twin is. I don't even know if I really believe in it. But what I do know is I'm tired. I do know that I'm ready to work on myself. And I mean, I'm literally hearing this from the divine masculines that I'm now working with. I've had a couple experiences whenever I um, was directed to end up in San Francisco during the eclipse, rather than right here in the home and the heartland of the total, total totality that's here in the heartland of the United States in the heart chakra. And I go to the heart chakra of California in the gold state, the Golden Gate Bridge, to discover that I was ending a cycle for myself that actually is where my cycle began with my um, ex-life partner that actually has champ right now that we're purifying the remainder of our pieces here um, to close out a chapter. And then while I'm there being presented with a couple different scenarios with the divine masculine showing and presenting in the 3D what where they're at and I'm still having communication with one of them. And, and it was two types of experiences that came through. Um, and basically, you know, being told by them and shown by them exactly where they're at in the physical 3d. And I won't go into all the story here right now. Um, this will be some extra stories. I'll be putting my book, but it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Be having this contact with the, the divine masculine, in the 3D and them showing up and showing up in my path for me to assist them now. It's just really beautiful. I mean, there are just really no words. Now, I will also tell you that uh, two things that I'm seeing that I'm experiencing personally is some knowing that the final phases of all the karmic partners or soulmates and those kind of karmic partners that are teaching you your final lessons here, those things have to be uh, completed. Those contracts have to be fulfilled, which is kind of like what I'm doing now with Champ is fulfilling and finalizing a contract here that is being finalized. And so a lot of the divine masculines are continuing and wrapping up those things. So they're, they may not even be fully out of those uh, contracts yet, but they're wrapping them up. And as well as some of the divine feminine are doing the same thing all at the same time. I wrote in my book, Twin Flame Codebreaker, about a year ago that before reunion came, that the purification of every past partner had to be completely like purified within each soul before reunion came. And now I'm seeing it in the 3D personally and people around me that I'm seeing this. And so it's really cool to see so many different things that were kind of predictions that are actually here, you know, be seeing it in the real life scenarios now. Um, it's really cool. But in addition to that, what I am seeing in the 5D um, especially with working with a lot of clients, but I'm seeing this on a lot of levels too, is there's a lot of role reversal going on in the 5D. So I talk about how we've had a template that's an old template. We've had to break that apart, which is the soul separation and a lot of separation we've had experience. And then both partners have to harmonize, creating a new template of new ways of doing things and coming back together to harmonize with the new roles. Well, that is already taking place in the 5D and some in the 3D, but it's taking place in the 5D and I'm seeing this, but I'm going to give you an example. Um, you know, I went, I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this in a movie or not, but I went last weekend. I don't think I did. I went last weekend and saw the movie leap that just came out last Friday. So I think, I think that, um, I think I might've went after the movie was posted. I don't know. Either way, it was such a great movie. It was an animated movie, but it's such a twin flame movie. And um, if you see in the picture for that, it's showing, you know, the masculine holding up the feminine and he has wings on his back and he's holding her. 
well, this is what's been happening that our twins and our beloveds have done for us. They've been our ladder while we went up in enlightenment. And they've been the ones we've stand on, walked on to go up to help us, you know, elevate. Okay. And they've been the ladder. They've been the support system. And along that way, we had to learn, learn to let go of them and not fix them and think that they had to do the same path and journey that we did and that we have to show them the light and the exact steps of what they have to do. They've had to break away now on their own. They've had to sort of let go of us and let us do the final stages sort of by ourselves in that breaking apart. And now the rules are reversing and now they're having to step up and come back in um, to take us home. And to be the one in that case, in that role reversal, guess what that means? They need us now. They need us to be the one that's kind of supporting them as they go up in the enlightenment. And that's where we are coming down the ladder a little bit to open up some of the enlightenment space in the template to give them some of that enlightenment and room and space for them to gain and take some of that light along this journey. For them to go up in consciousness, we've had to come kind of back down. And it's not and, and the it's not that we're like, you know, going backwards. It's more that we are um, feeling an idea and concepts of, you know, um, well, I'm doing things I wouldn't have normally done in the past. Or I'm feeling things that I should be over by now. And this is where we're actually um, subconsciously, we're clearing for the divine masculine um, and I, again, I have felt this on Monday myself. I was putting, I've been put in a situation that uh, it, it was exactly where I need to be. It, it was two scenarios of being in between two situations of two options, two choices, um, both like giving me two scenarios, and it put me right in a twin flame facilitator position and a twin flame position, and to look and feel just like that. And what I realized, it was making me feel everything that the divine masculine was feeling and creating a lot of these fears and not wanting to face things that like were simple little things. I mean, things that there's no way in my own conscious mind, like I mastered those like a long time ago. Why am I having to feel so much fear about facing this right now? And it literally sent me for a uh, transition and a shift this week of going back through and reliving um, and letting go and having to reface some fears and really reface something I've even mastered and to do it almost like it was harder than even ever before. And like I'd never even done it before, even to the point where I was feeling sick and, and feeling butterflies and I had to reach out for help myself. And, you know, like, but what I would tell you is these kind of energies are really transmuting quicker and faster, but it's helping the role reversal and it's helping clear the karma and it's helping bring down like all of the shadows so that they can, the divine masculine can gain some light. And that is us now, you know, being the ladder for them to go up. And in that case, we have to decide, are we in this to win this? And do we want the gold? And are we going to be the ladder now? And are we going to like then back up and let them go ahead? They've, they've had a breakaway. The divine masculine has, they've had to take the long way home They've had to, you know, be fearful of um, experiencing and not feeling worthy of unconditional love. They've had to make a lot of mistakes. They've had to go after karmic partners and that have helped, been contracts that they've had to release karmic patterns. And now they're re-returning to that and looking at the person and working on these things. And they're scared to death, honestly. And they're exhausted. And, and I'm seeing that even through reading the energy of the divine masculine. They're scared. They really are. They don't really know. Just think about this. Think about this. It is hard enough for us. And we're conscious enough that we somewhat get it. Even though sometimes we might think we're crazy because, you know, like, you know, normal people, you know, you've had those thoughts. So normal people don't would, wouldn't understand this. So I can't talk about it. Right. But yet we if we're if we're in this journey at this phase and we've been the divine feminine no matter where we're at or we're working on ourselves we at least somehow reach out we at least somehow get it we at least somehow have a support system you have to realize the divine masculine is coming in they don't have the support system and they're afraid to reach out and they're afraid to talk about it i mean a lot of the divine feminine are afraid to talk about it 
Imagine what these divine masculine are feeling right now. They're really ready to, scared to talk about it. So we need to be there to support them, not fix them. And that does not mean that we don't continue our journey. And it doesn't mean that we can't, you know, leave the light on. And it doesn't mean that we can't support and praise. But what it does mean is we have to be careful not to get too overexcited that we, you know, get disappointed because it's not happening in our time and that this is a divine timing. So I want to share with you these three steps that I feel like is what we need as the divine feminine or, you know, the, the ones that are kind of leaving the light on here at the finish line and to that we need to be working on three steps to help get to this finish line here and to make sure that we are winning love and experiencing love and that we're in it to win it and that we are leaving the light home and that we are a team player. So in these three steps, I'll tell you what they are first. I'll give you some tips on, you know, like kind of how to work through this. So one is get over it. And the other one is get in it to win it. And the other one is get on with it. So the three steps are get over it, get in it to win it, and get on with it. All right. These are the three things that we need to be doing is, is continuing the journey while the divine masculine is catching up. So to get over it, I feel like and I'm seeing this with a lot of the divine feminine that I'm working with, is we got to let go of the past. We got to get over it. We got to let go of the past. And what's happening is, in the past, like we've, we've been conditioned to what this twin flame journey has presented. And it's like another lesson, having to wait again, another thing to release. How much more karma? Um, is it going to continue? Are they ever going to show up? Um, they've created a lot of pain for us, a lot of suffering. And are we going to really truly forgive them? Are we going to really let go of all the history here? Honestly. And we're talking the history of the eternity. So are we going to continue to keep our mindset in the history of this and to block ourselves from um, experiencing how far we've came in this journey versus and, and where we're at and praising that aspect? Are we going to continue to focus on the past? You know, the past is not going to get us anywhere. So we have to really let go of that past. We have to learn how to live in the moment meditate in a space of creating the inner peace and harmony, uh, inner peace and harmony and finding the stillness inside. That's what we kind of need to do is stay centered, really stay grounded, stay balanced. And I'll tell you a big part of letting go of the past is we got to lose the label. Okay. So twin flames has gotten a really bad rap. They've gotten a really bad, you know, stigmatism and stigma as far as, um, you know what that means and that twin flames don't really get even get together and they're not supposed to be together and that is hard journey and you know push pull the runner chaser you know there is just so many pieces to that and i want you to think about that think about that and i look at this from a chiropractor and having diagnosed patients for years anytime anybody gains a label it defines who they are based on a label it can be limiting. It creates a limiting belief system. And I'm not saying that, you know, there's a place and a space in this twin flame journey and carrying out the mission of twin flames and they're not real because they are. The problem is they've been viewed and looked at from a negative perception. And that negative perception has created this image that's creating like struggle, suffering hardships. So we're letting go of the idea that we don't have to do that anymore, but then we're carrying it out by still living in the past and still living in the concept and the idea of the old ways of what people have experienced through the twin flame journey. So letting go of the label and this idea that that's how twin flames work is part of this. So it's like, we got to recreate our thought process of the journey of the twin flame journey in itself and not focusing on how hard and how much struggle a twin flame journey is and look at it in the perception and to make it our mission to change the concept and the idea of what a twin flame is, what a true twin flame journey is and what that means and let go of the label of it and let go of all of those negative aspects around that. So get in it to win it. So we have to say yes to this twin flame journey. A lot of people have not done that yet. 
You know, I've been teaching that for a little while and I would really highly recommend you consider that and to say yes. And to in that meaning, like get in the game, you know, be in this journey to win it. Don't, you know, don't have all these doubts and don't have all this negative aspect and think, oh, well, maybe. And um, who knows? And, you know, all these pieces. Now, you don't sit. I don't never say and I've said this before. I'll say it again. I'm not saying here to wait. You have your your mission. You have your own skills, and there. And again, this is also where each person is in the revolution here, because I will tell you, there's been situations I've been put in through this journey. Had I not, like, if I had waited, I would have never learned what I needed to learn from lesson from other situations and incidences and being put in circumstances and aligning with other people that I needed to continue my work, own personal work, and my own expansion as has the divine masculine with a lot of their karmic partners. So, you know, we have to be in it to win it. So really just kind of just say, you know what? Again, losing the label saying, you know what? I don't really have to define love because love doesn't have a label really. Divine love really doesn't need a label. It is just what our destiny is. Like I said, our divine destiny and that we're wanting to let love live and we want to create one heart and we're going to go the extra mile to get it, which is, you know, what I said is bringing home the gold. And so in order to do that, all I need to really do is say yes to, you know, whatever I came here to experience, whatever I signed up for, put me in alignment with that. I want to create, be the best version of myself. I want to have the ultimate relation with myself so I can have the ultimate relationship with the divine part of this lifetime. And ask your guides every day to put you in alignment with that. That is getting in it to win it. That is bringing home the gold. That is, you know, creating the, going the extra mile to create the one heart in order to let love live in order to fulfill your divine destiny. That's bringing home the gold. So, and again, you will not want to miss my Dr. Harmony's um, Albuccini's, um, <laughs> the speech I created of uh, the, on any given day, my any given day Albuccini speech is coming up at the end on get in it to win it. And, you know, I want you to listen to that. I've created something that I kind of it came in through kind of my my channeling here and I was divinely guided to share that with you so I will play that at the end my um speech for you to on any given day your beloved could be walking through the door and are you in it to win it okay so <clears throat> we go those extra miles right we go those extra steps and these are three extra steps that we got to kind of like continue to stay into and continue to get in alignment with um and continue to uh you know, show up in our own path and that way that we continue to keep the light on and keep the door open for the divine masculine. Okay, so then um, get on with it. Now, what that really means is a couple things. That means that we have to continue to practice our patience. That means we have to, it's practice patience, purpose, and then praise. Okay, so patience, purpose, and praise. That's how we get on with it. We got to continue our patience to the nth degree. We got to get in our purpose. We got to get in alignment with what we came here to show up to do with our own journey for our own personal self and the divine mission of even potentially the um, twin flame mission and the joint mission. And until if you're not doing that yet, you're holding up the progress here. And they're gonna you're gonna continue to be holding back the divine masculine because they're gonna also keep you in check with your purpose in this. So be asking every day is what is my purpose? What is my highest divine purpose? And if you haven't watched my return to oneness of getting in alignment with the sacred self, getting into alignment with source, getting into alignment with your divine purpose, and getting into alignment with your beloved and getting into alignment with all that is, um, I have a um, playlist. I put that all in a playlist. Uh, um, I'll actually put it as a suggestive video here. Those are the pieces that you need to make sure that you are in alignment with here to get on with your purpose. And so if you haven't done some of that work, you need to continue that. All right. It doesn't mean you don't hold open the door, have open arms, but you better be moving forward with your own purpose. And that means, you know, uh, taking a look at the mirror yourself 
and saying, what do I need to carry out here? What's my portion? And a lot of times the divine feminine gets so hung up on what the ma divine masculine is doing that they get lost in doing what they need to be doing. So I invite you to do some role shifting there for yourself, because when you let go of that, it's going to leave that space open for the divine masculine to come on in faster. And then praise. This is so important because I want to use this example. You know, um, I use this example a lot. So there's nothing worse than doing the best that you can and uh, being still told you're not good enough or um, being still looked upon as bad. And this is energy. It's the intention behind it and, you know, that is put out there that everybody feels. So it doesn't even have to be words. But just think about when you go to and you work at a job, and this is the best way to explain this, you're in a job and you are in a very difficult like environment and maybe even a lot of co corporate, and this happens a lot in corporate, that you are doing your best to do the best job you can, but no matter what you do, it's not good enough and you're told about what you're not getting done. And you know, there, somebody's always on you and they're looking over your shoulder and they're telling you what a bad job you're doing and that you need to be doing more, right? Okay. What do you want to do? You don't, you want to like hang it up. You're miserable. You want to go look for another job and you can't stand it, right? Think about what you're doing to your twin in that same scenario because this is the exact same thing. And instead, what you need to be doing is praising your beloved, looking at the positive in them, going to their higher self for now and praising them and sharing with them and lifting them up and making them a star in your universe so that they become what it is you want them to be. And there's, you know, and again, back to the, the job scenario, say so you did a job and you may have done a, an okay job and you may have gave it a lot of effort. Maybe you could have gave more effort, but if you have the right communicator, the right effective uh, communication in your job scenario and your boss or your, you know, somebody that's, you know, your manager and they're, have effective leadership and they come in and start to praise you for what you did and not point out all your flaws and what you didn't get done. You, what do you want to do? You want to strive harder. You want to do a better job and you will, you know, start giving more than is even asked to you, right? This is what I'm talking about here. So this is where you need to be doing this with your beloved. And I want to share with you, I have a dear friend of mine that is also a twin flame that this week, you know, having conversations with her had shared this with me. And I told her, I said, that's such a great idea. I talk about this praise all the time. I have assignments all the time, but I told her, I said, I'm going to be using that um, thought and sharing that with people because it's such a great concept. So with that being said, you know, I've been saying that reunion is 22 union of self reunion with your, our um, beloved is numbers 44. And so she decided, you know, to kind of shift this focus in, in her perception of where she is personally and where she is with her divine twin. Um, she is she decided to make a list of 44 things she loved about her divine beloved. And I just thought that was so beautiful. I shared with a couple of clients this week and they thought it was beautiful. And um, so I invite you to make a list of 44 things that you love about your divine partner. And I also tell people that, you know, in this praise, you know, put up something that's a reminder, what I call bumper sticker that reminds you of how much you have gratitude for them and see the gift in them instead of like the curse in them and that the bad things in them. Whatever it is, it's a bumper sticker that reminds you how good they are and, and that the blessing they are. Put that in front of you and every morning send them love and praise because they're the ones that's helped you get to where you're at and to go up that ladder and to create that enlightenment to be find this inner peace and happiness and to experience and joy and inner peace and happiness and they only want the same and we should only want the same for them without anything and any the expectations return for anything and that is what unconditional love is and you know, and doing so, and I've had clients do that for a long time. And I've gotten a lot of feedback on that, that, you know, they'll be doing that and they'll be doing it every day. And then their beloved will contact them, you know, and they've said that. And then guess what? That, that uh, person at the t at that time, then they, um, 
had not let go enough, they still had codependencies. And so they would be zip and then it goes away. So we got to stay in alignment with ourselves. We got to stay in our own journey. We got to find the inner peace and happiness, let go of the codependencies, release all the abandonments, find the forgiveness and praise them and for the gift that they gave given us and to get in it to win it so we can get over it so that we can uh, get in it to win it so that we can get on with it and that we can receive the gold trophy that we came here to experience as a twin flame that we can have that ultimate relationship during this lifetime and it does not mean it has to be in the next lifetime or another other time that we can experience here because that's what we signed up for in this time to experience and what you perceive is what you get and what you choose is what you're going to receive so what do you want what do you choose what are you in it to win it and um so with that i'm going to leave you with my dr harmony's albacino <laughs> Uh, speech of um, that um, is on any given day um, that your beloved is going to be walking in the door. All right. So be sure I'm going to go ahead and say my goodbyes now, but be sure to, to listen to Miss speech here. Um, may you always face your fears, find freedom and glow forward on fire. Please like share the shine subscribe and may you have a very blessed holiday weekend we have here in the united states this weekend with labor day here coming up and uh much love to you many blessings namaste enjoy the video okay or, or the audio enjoy the speech let's put it that way enjoy much love twin flames are champions love has won it is time to receive your rewards. On any given day, your divine masculine will be ready to face you. The question is, are you ready to bring home the gold? Twin Flames, we are only steps away from ending the biggest battle that our soul has ever experienced throughout this entire eternity. And it all comes down to, are we going to claim our victory or not? We must say yes and start treating our twin flame journey as a team effort in order to claim victory. We have to strive for these last few inches, inch by inch, before we can bring home the goal. We have to realize that the divine masculines have still been living in their shadows and we have to decide are we going to leave them in hell right now? Are we going to leave them there and continue to beat them up for all the bad things that they've done to us? Or can we rise up? Can we help them fight their way back into the light? Helping them dig their way out of hell one inch at a time. Now we can't do it for them. They have to first find it and then focus on that light. But are we going to choose to leave the light on for them? Are we going to greet them with open arms when they get home? They have chased us off just because they didn't feel worthy of unconditional love. They may have even ran off to be with a karmic partner of which they had to complete that agreement to clear their karmic patterns. But now, they're waking up and they are willing to face the man and the woman in the mirror. Now, are you going to have regrets because they're having regrets and they are feeling guilty and they're opening their eyes to the lessons that they are consciously seeing in their newly awakened minds and they're beginning to realize that we are teaching them and that we've been teaching them all along. But only they could learn from them by making their own mistakes. We had to learn to let go and we had to stop trying to fix them. They had to take the long way home and they had to learn their own mistakes. And they had to realize that unconditional love is what they were really wanting all along and that that's what they wanted in their life so that they could 
dig deep with inside and find that inner peace and happiness that their soul was seeking. You know, this divine masculine, they're waking up and to this idea and they're realizing it's really just a game of trying to balance their emotions in search of that unconditional love that their soul has been searching for this entire eternity. Twin flames have came all this way to experience this eternal love during this life. And the idea of giving up now before reaching the finish line leaves no margin for error. During this stage of the game, we have to rise up. We have to step up. And one step too late means that, you know, the enlightened one may be giving up. One step too early means that the, the one in the darkness runs away. It gets confusing, people. Of course it does. But we all have to stop running from ourselves whether we're the Divine Feminine or the Divine Masculine. We've been so conditioned to the idea of one second things are just moving too slow and on the other second things are just moving too fast. And at the same time, all these signs have been showing up everywhere. All the time, just screaming at us, getting louder and louder by the second. But it's going to take mastering these last few steps home with precision to receive our twin flame tro trophy in the end. Remember, this twin flame journey is a team effort. And if you're going to win, you must go those extra few miles. You must go those extra few steps and you must get over the past, get in it to win it and get on with it to claim your victory. So, you need to decide, are you going to be a team player? Are you going to do it with what it takes to leave the light on for your divine partner to come home? It is time to say yes to being a team player. It is time to say yes to going these extra inches because these extra inches are going to make the difference between winning or losing, between living and loving to our greatest potential during this lifetime. So I invite you to ask yourself, are you willing to fight and die for these last few inches? Because that's what unconditional love is. Your twin flame is 11 inches from the, in the front of your face and now no one but you can make the decision. No one but you can do it. You gotta face that person in the mirror and say, do I wanna experience the ultimate relationship of this lifetime? How can I expect my beloved to do this if I'm not willing to do the same? Am I willing to go the extra inches? Remember, you are looking at yourself in the mirror. That means you're looking at your twin in the mirror. You're seeing the reflection in front of you. So what are you going to do? What are you expecting of them? How can you expect them to do it if you won't look at the same person in the mirror? How can you expect them to take these last few steps of showing up if you're not willing to stay in the same game and leave the light on for them? You get to decide. What you see is what you get. And what you see in your beloved is what you're going to get. And also what you see is what your beloved is going to see. So I challenge you, get in the game. You know, you came all this way. Why do you want to give up now? Remember, when you see that they make sacrifices for you up to this point, it was for the team. And when you've made sacrifices up to this point, it has been for the team. And when it comes down to it, you're going to do this. Are you going to do the same for them that they've been doing for you by holding you up this amount of time? And now it's us holding them up. This is the role reversal. This is what a team does, friends. And either we get to heal now or we will die ex not without experiencing the eternal love during this lifetime. 
being a team player, that is unconditional love, friends. So I leave you with the thought. Do you want it? Do you really want unconditional love? And if you want it, are you willing to give it?